Let us pray. Loving God, Heavenly Father, come, come into your presence is always a joy. Bless us, O oh Lord, as we come to your awesome presence yet again this morning to worship you, to adore you, to praise you, to look at your word together, to pray together. Bless the time that we spend in your presence. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Shall we listen to our opening hymn? Great is thy From Genesis chapter 3 verses 1 to 7. Today's Old Testament reading is taken from Genesis chapter 3 verses 1 to 7. Now Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian, and he led his flock to the west side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. He looked and behold, the bush was burning, yet it was not consumed. And Moses said, I will turn aside to see this great sight, why the bush is not burned. When the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here I am. Then he said, Do not come near. Take your sandals off your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. And he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt, and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters. I know their sufferings. Here ends the reading. Shall we look to the Lord in prayer? Gracious Lord, we thank you for the gift of the word. And even as we come to your word 
Today, help us decipher meaningful truths from your word. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Friends, we live in a very consumeristic society today. And once in a while, we are called to reflect on what should be a proper Christian response to the consumerism that we see around. For a short meditation, I will draw your attention to the passage that was read to us from Genesis chapter 3 verses 1 to 7. Well, this is a very known story where the tempter tempts Eve to eat of the tree and then Eve and Adam facing the consequences of eating. What has to do, what has that to do with consumerism and Christian response? Friends, I would draw your attention to a few insights that this text tells us or cautions us about the consumeristic lifestyle. Christian response should be a response pro-life. Christian response should be a morally and ethically correct response. Let's look at the issue. First, the scripture in the lesson that we read today talks about the craftiness of the servant. Friends, this craftiness that we first saw in the Garden of Eden continued to be part of the life of the world for years and centuries later and today we find its manifestations in different forms around us and therefore when we talk about a Christian response to consumerism the first challenge that I would like to give you is this to have an awareness about the craftiness of the serpent and if we could equate the serpent to the market today be aware of the craftiness of the market that would draw you into its influence without you even noticing it or knowing it. They enslave people. They influence the thinking of the people. They influence the decision making of the people. A Christian response to such a reality should be a response of responsibility, response that searches for alternatives when offers are made, response that weighs how pro-life it is. The second insight from the particular text that we read is about a conversation that creates interest in the product that you want to sell. And that is the mark of the market. Well, the crafty serpent knew what the product was. The crafty serpent wanted Adam and Eve to cross the mark and eat the fruit of the tree that was forbidden. And now they engage in a conversation. They engage in the creation of interest. Friends, what is wrong with consumerism? The consumerist principle of life that looks only for profit and what would I gain? It is this. It draws us into conversations that ultimately could lead to disaster. But hiding that disaster from us, it presents a rosy picture, a positive picture. A Christian response should always be realistic, realistic in the sense that it should be able to foresee the impact of the action taken. Thirdly, the cunningness in advertisements. Well, the lady, Eve, engages in a conversation. 
and says, yes, the Lord has given us everything in the garden, but has forbidden one thing, that is the fruit of the tree of life. And, the, and God has told us, the moment we eat of it, we will die. Now you see, with half-truths, semi-truths and non-truths, the advertisement for the fruit is being made. What is being told? We are told, you shall not die. Your eyes shall open. And ultimately they are told, you shall be God-like. God, God self. You shall be like God. Friends, the cunningness of the advertisement world. The tox that lives in half-truths. A Christian responds to consumerism should be a response that is able to sit through, see through the lens of truth, the lens of Jesus, the lens of incarnation on the advertisements that are offered luring us into the world of untruths, destruction and disaster. The fourth insight from the particular text is the conceptualization of reality. A concocted reality is being formed and they said this fruit, what are they told? It is good to eat. They have not eaten it, nobody has eaten it. But before that they are told a virtual reality is created, a concept is created, good to eat. It is good to see and it is good for wisdom. Who told them so? But very clearly Eve is made to adhere to a concept, by a concept, that this particular fruit is good. Good, not only to see and eat, but also to gain wisdom. Friends, seeing through the construction of concepts, conceptualization of reality, seeing through them should be the right response human response or a Christian response. Fifthly, it is all about the consequences. Eve ate. The product was consumed. Consumption happened. And what happens next? She gave to Adam, her husband, and everybody consumed the product. Friends, not thinking about the consequences we consume, and that is a problem. When you talk about Christian response to consumerism, we always talk about a yardstick. We talk about a second thought we talk about asking the question, what would Jesus do? Several, several, several of the people around us fall prey. They consume and by the time they realize it's too late. Friends, and therefore, a Christian response should always be a response that weighs the option and weighs the consequences of each of the action. When we talk about climate change, every act of yours today either mitigates climate change or fuels up climate change. Therefore, we should always be aware of consequences and if possible, wherever possible, make sure those consequences are not destructive but pro-life. Christ, Christ, therefore, had to totally incarnate to redeem humanity from the consequences of the consumption of a prohibited product sold beautifully by the craftiness of the evil one. Let's pray. Precious Lord, we thank you for challenging us to open our eyes to the consumerism that is around us, the craftiness with which they lure us into conversation, 
the creation of interest through conversations. O Lord, for the cunningness in advertisements, we pray that you would give us eyes to see through, ears to hear through. The conception of untrue realities help us to break them down. Lord, consuming is itself an issue where we forget about consequences. Help us, Lord, in Christ and the cross, gauge the consequences of every act of ours. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Shall we have the closing hymn? Guide me. it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with each one of us now and forevermore. Amen.